Harper, now that you're about to enter civilian life again, I hope you're familiar with the GI Bill of Rights. Yes, sir. Then you know, of course, that there are unemployment benefits for you to cover 52 weeks. In the event you should wish to continue your education, the government will pay $500 a year for tuition, laboratory fees, books, similar expenses, plus $50 a month for subsistence and an additional $25 for one or more dependents. Well, that's powerful decent of the government, sir, but I ain't aiming to get educated. Just what are your plans? Well, I just want to be a civilian. That is, I was on the stage. I did a song and dance act before I came in. Yes, I know. I enjoyed your act at the show last Saturday night very much. Sort of a breath of the old South. Thank you, sir. So, you see, I just want to pick up where I left off. All right, Harper, good luck to you. The paymaster will have your final pay, and you get $300 mustering out money. Yes, sir. That'll be paid to you in installments of $100 each. I know. I'll get it right now. Oh. Bye, sir. Goodbye, Mr. Dixon Harper. Oh, Harper. Yes, sir. When you get back to the old plantation, have a mint julep for me. I sure will. My pappy will have one, too, sir. <laughs> Private Dixon Harper. Dubuque, Iowa. All set? I sure am, honey child. Gonna get my final pay, plus $100 mustering out dough, and then New York City's right over the river. What's the first thing you're going to do? I'll give you three guesses. Jerry, Betty, Jane, Margie, Mabel. Margie. Margie. East 7612. And we release men for active duty. <laughs> Can't you see that Dane doesn't want a date? Yeah, come on, send a shovel. Wait a minute. End of the line. Oh, listen, you all, I gotta call my girl. Who do you think I'm gonna call my draft board? How do you like that? Who does this guy think he is? <whistles> Scram! Give me a beer. One beer. Here. Thank you, sir. Traffic in a phone booth's pretty heavy, huh, Bob? I'll say it is. After two years overseas, you can't even get near a phone to call your girlfriend. That's okay. Let's use the house phone, Bob. Sure enough? Sure. Now, that's what I call a right understanding hide. That's all right. I guess I'm just a romantist. Huh? A romantist. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Your number, please. Uh, let me have baby saving for me with a vocal. <laughs> I'm sorry, there's no vocal on that number, sir. Hiya, baby. Did you miss me? Baby, did you miss me? We don't have that number, sir. Now, don't tell me that, honey child. Well, I guess I know what we have. But, Margie, I couldn't meet you that night. I was shipped out. Well, honey child, you know I wouldn't stand you up. How about tonight, huh? You know something? Those two years overseas, we fellas used to talk about what we were fighting for. Some would say democracy, and others so as kids would have a better world. But you know what I'd say? I'm fighting for Margie, my girl. Yes, sir, that's what I'd say. What a line. Shh. Baby, all I've been thinking about is tonight and how we'd really tear this little old town apart. Uh-oh, here comes a blizzard. Miss Parker, you have been told repeatedly that personal conversations with customers are strictly forbidden. I I'm sorry, Miss Quackenfish, but you see, Indeed, I, I do. Very clearly. Don't let it happen again. Yes, yes, ma'am. Now, wait a minute, honey. Before you tell me what you're trying to say, I got something for you to hear. Your number, please. Listen, sister. Give me four bits worth of baby saving for me with vocal and keep it coming fast. Now, honey child, just latch your ears to this music, and I dare you to say you won't see me tonight. Why, every word of it should have a special meaning for you all. <laughs> vocal on that record. There will be. Watch out for Quack and Fish. Has anybody noticed a guy around? A handsome little fella all dressed 
dressed in brown. If you should ever find him, stay right behind him, baby. Save him for me. Now he's so shy and gentle, I love him so. He's not too continental, I know it, Joe. So if you should discover my long lost lover, baby, save him for me. I can't describe the way that he walks. I couldn't call it by name. You'll have to wait around till he talks, and then you'll be crying for some more of the same. Now maybe he'll be waiting around the church. I'm hoping that he's ready to take the lunch. But if I'm late to meet him, be sure and greet him, baby. Save him for me. I can't describe the way that he walks. I couldn't call it by name. You'll have to wait around till he talks, and then you'll be crying for some more of the same. Now maybe he'll be waiting around the church. I'm hoping that he's ready to take the lurch. But if I'm late to meet him, be sure and greet him. Save him for me. Oh, Margie. Remember that night on the Coney Island boat, huh? Yeah? What about that night on the Coney Island boat? Oh, who are you all? I'll tear you apart if I ever get my hands on you. Margie, honey, what happened? Married? No, not you married. You're going to get into trouble. Shh. Well, what do you know about that? There ought to be a war again. She married a Marine. Well, you know the Marines, first on land and on sea. <laughs> quack, 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 quack. After two years, my first night home, and I haven't got a date. I'm awfully sorry. Oh, let's fall in love? Are you kidding? Hey, listen to Cookie. You sound like a great idea for a guy's first night home. I'm lonesome, honest. I'm not trying to be fresh or anything, but... Oh, perhaps you mean this one. La cucaracha, la cucaracha, about a quarter to nine. La cucaracha, la cucaracha, about a quarter to nine. La cucaracha, la cucaracha, about a quarter to nine. La cucaracha, la cucaracha. About a quarter to nine. What kind of words are those? Sounds like a rib to me. Hey, Charlie, turn that thing off, will you? Sure. So you go get married, huh? Yeah. Women, they're all alike. We men are just putty in their hands. I read a story once. A fool there was, and he made his prayer to a rag, a bone, and a bunch of hair. Well, don't take it to heart, pal. Look who could write you about a quarter to nine. Ladies and gentlemen of the radio audience, this is Leighton Noble bringing you 15 minutes of dance time straight from Manhattan's popular nightclub, La Cucaracha. La Cucaracha? Is that the name of this joint? Sure. Well, shut my mouth. About a quarter to nine, eh? Well, shut my mouth again. Good evening, y'all. Hello, Joe. How are you, baby? Marines. <laughs> About a quarter to nine. <clears throat> Good evening, you all. It's about a quarter to nine. It is? Yeah. And Jack said he'd be here at 8. Some nerve. Jack. Oh, 
Well, hello. Well, uh, hello. I'll bet you're BB. No, no, I'm not BB. Gee, I thought maybe you was BB. Well, I'm not. <laughs> well, Doodle Doodle BB comes along. How about a dance? La Look, I'm not. La Cucaracha. Could you all be Miss Quarter to Nine? Could be, but I'm a little late. Well, I'm Dixon Harper. And I'm. You're even prettier than I thought you'd be. Thank you. <laughs> well, this is La Cucaracha, so what are we waiting for? Good evening. Good evening. This way, please. Is this all right? Sure, fine. Oh, shall we dance? All right. Well, in the meantime, how about a couple of drinks? Si, senor. Cuba libres? No, mint juleps. Mint juleps? Sure. Don't they know how to make them in here? Certainly. Oh, you'd think I asked for a couple of pink camels. I'd like the garacha. You might as well have. Honey child, you're okay. You're all right yourself, soldier. Say, I don't even know your name. It's Susan Parker. Susan Parker? Dixon Harper. They kind of go together. <laughs> uh -huh, I think they will. Drink, Colonel? Yeah, thanks, Joe. How are things going? Not so good. I think I'll go back to Oklahoma. Oh, uh, <clears throat> take care of that, will you, Joe? I'll fix you up later. I hope they taste as good as you Southerners claim. You mean to tell me you never? Say, I never thought to ask you if you like them or not. Well, isn't that just like me? You know, being from the South and all. I know I like them. Mister, I've been hankering to meet up with you for two years. Mm, mighty potent. It's a man's drink, all right. And a very nice man, too. And you're a nice girl, Susan Parker. Mighty nice. Thank you, sir. And smart, too. You know, I like the way you arranged for us to meet here tonight. Well, that. I guess I wasn't so smart. Well, what do you mean? Oh, well, let's not talk about me. I'm not half as interesting as a soldier who just returned from two years overseas. Oh, you are to me, honey child. Come on, give. All right. But don't say you didn't ask for it. Number one, girl comes to New York because she wants to sing on the radio. Number two, she gets an audition. Oh, but here's where it's different. Girl is not a big success. And radio executives do not hail her as their greatest find since canned soup. So? So a girl gets a job at the jukebox. Do you have a good voice? You tell me. You heard me sing tonight, Baby Saving for Me. You sang that? Why, honey, you're great. I've heard that vocal sung by the best of them, and they can't compare to you. Dixon, how I wish you were the commercial broadcasting company. A girl with a voice like yours shouldn't be turning those records on and off for a living. Oh, after tonight, I won't be. I just lost my job. What well, kind of what? Oh, quack and fish. What kind of fish? <laughs> quack and fish. She's my supervisor. Oh. She heard me sing uh, La Cucaracha to you, and that did it. Honey, child, you weren't singing to me. You were singing to this whole wide world. What are you talking about? I'm talking about you and me teaming up and knocking them for a loop. Susan. Can you sing Alabama Bound? Mister, I sure enough can. That's great. Wait a minute, I'll be right back. Hey, where are you going? Excuse me, sir, can I speak to you all? Sure. Well, my girlfriend and I, we, uh, you see... Hey, wait a minute. What's on your mind, soldier? Well, my girl and I, we sort of feel kind of far away from the South, and... Well, we had a downright hankering to bust into a little Southern fried singing. You know, just like we used to do on the old plantation. So you want to give us a little impromptu show? Yeah, if it's all right with you all. It's all yours, Jackson. What do you have? Alabama Bound. Right. Thanks. All right, honey, we're on. What are you talking about? Ladies and gentlemen, as an added attraction this evening, two of our guests are going to take us right back to their homeland in the Old South with Alabama Bound. <laughs> 
That's us. Oh, Dixon, I can. Sure you can. Just follow me. You'll pick up the routine. Come on. Oh, but... I'm Alabama bomb. There'll be no heebie-jeebies hanging round. Just gave the meanest ticket man on earth. All I'm worth to put my tootsies in an upper berth. Just hear that choo-choo sound. I know that soon we're gonna cover ground. And then I'll holler so the world will know. Here I go. I'm Alabama bound. I'm Alabama bound. There'll be no heebie-jeebies hanging round. Gave the meanest ticket man on earth All I'm worth To put my tootsies in an upper berth Just hear that lucky sound I'll have someone to put my arms around That's why I'm shouting for the world to know Here I go We can't miss. We'll build an act, just like I used to do alone. All I needed before was a pretty girl like you to give it that Southern Belle atmosphere. What do you say, honey? Well, I don't know. It isn't exactly what I've always thought about. Oh, I know. You just want to stand up in front of a band and throw a deadpan at the mic and yodel about it like all the other vocalists. Maybe you're right at that. I know I'm right. And with me to coach you, you'd be a natural-born Southern gal. It's funny. I've always loved the South. There's something so traditional about it. The magnolia trees. Did you ever hear those spirituals at night? No, I never did. Pardon my intrusion, sir. Your conversation is delightfully reminiscent of my boyhood days. Might I presume to introduce myself? Colonel Hubert Fransworth, the Mississippi Fransworths. Well, it's an honor to make your acquaintance, sir. Thank you, sir. May I present Miss Susan Parker, Colonel Fransworth. How do you do? Uh, my pleasure, miss. Won't you join us? Why, thank you, sir. <laughs> thank you. It's indeed a pleasure to meet a fellow southerner, sir. Yes, indeed. You are a very fine singer, miss. Oh, thank you very much. And you, sir? Yes? Are not a southerner. No. Huh? Well, certainly he is. He's, he's drinking mint juleps. Yeah. <laughs> miss Parker, if there's one thing a southerner knows, it's another southerner. And you, sir, are a Yankee, if ever I met one. Well, of all the crazy... Uh, not that I hold any grudge against Yankees. Thanks. <laughs> and furthermore, you almost had me fooled. Me too. Well, now, wait a minute, Susan. Don't get sore. But kidding me along, putting on an act. Well, that's just what it is, an act, but not like you think. Okay, so I wasn't born in the old South. But I always did get a bang out of that place. So you adopted it for your own. Now there's no harm in that, is it, miss? No. Yes, not. At any rate, I would say his uh, drinking habits are discerning, very discerning. Oh, a uh, waiter, another drink, please. Excellent suggestion, my boy. Another highball, Colonel? Yeah. Sir, I'm a southerner. I drink nothing but mint juleps. Have you been away from the South long, Colonel? Yeah, you're far away from that old man river. Yes, it's been a long time. Ah, uh, you young people don't know what it was like in my youth. Beautiful women, fast horses, beautiful women, song, beautiful women. Sometimes cost a gay young blade his inheritance. You mean your pappy done told you and turned you out in the cold? Yes. Well, where was his southern hospitality, sir? Dixon. There's no harm done, Miss Susan. I've always managed to get along, what with one thing or another. Well, how would you like to get in on another right now? I'm always ready to turn an honest dollar. What's the deal? Us. Look, we just did a fast routine, didn't we? And the audience ate it up, right? But we didn't fool you, Colonel, and that's where you come in. What do you mean, sir? Well, we gotta have background. All that spiel about your old days in the South, that's on the level, isn't it? Sir, I'll have you know my family dates way back to... That's far enough. All you gotta do is give us the right dope. Now, take Susan, for instance. She's gotta be a real Southern belle. I gather you want me to supply the fundamental facts of an old family tree. That's right. Can you do it? Yes, I can. She's got to have a good name. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> You're laughing at the idea. 
On the contrary, I think it's a magnificent idea. Why, by the time I'm through, you'll be as southern as... as a mint julep. Had a boy, Colonel. For a small stipend, of course. Oh, don't worry about that. All you gotta do is turn us into the real McCoys. <laughs> I don't seem to recall any southern family named McCoy. suggest that we retire to some secluded spot where we can continue this discussion. We can go to my apartment. Excellent, excellent. Diane, come on in. <laughs> Won't you sit down? Thank you. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, do sit down. <laughs> Thank you. If you should discover my long-lost lover, baby, Save him for me. Well, I guess Diane's taking a shower. Apparently. Well, Colonel, let's get down to business. Yes, let's do. First of all, she's got to have that good name. Oh, I've got a name for her. Suits her right well, too. Yes? Mr. Harper, sir, permit me to present Miss Susanna Bell Withers, the last of a long line of Mississippi Bell Withers. How do you do, sir? Mighty pleased to make your acquaintance, Miss. <laughs> <laughs> Say, wait a minute. That family name, is it safe to use it? Why, of course. The last bell with us was Agatha. She died a spinster. Well, give us the lowdown, Colonel. The old mansion's still standing. It was built in uh, 1841. 1841. Remember that? 1841. Ah, oh, it was a beautiful old plantation. Old Jeff Davis was a frequent visitor there. You sure about all this, Colonel? Well, I should be. I nearly married Agatha Bell with us myself. I can still smell the old magnolia tree out on the spreading terrace where I gave Agatha her first kiss. <laughs> uh, that was just before her brother Stanton came home from college. Oh, Stanton, that's your great-granduncle. My great-granduncle. What gave was Stanton, Colonel? Well, he was a bad boy, drank, gambled, ran away with his mother's French maid. <laughs> Small wonder. A dainty morsel I've never seen. <laughs> she was about so tall. Is that so? And, uh, Is that oh, so? Oh, uh, Colonel, hmm? let's get on with the facts now, huh? Oh, <clears throat> yeah. Now, well, let me see. <laughs> Baby, save him for me. Susanna Bell with us. I can see her now. Oh, uh, that was Diane. Yes, I see. I saw. Uh, yes. Well, uh, let's go through the routine again. What's your name? Well, my name is Susanna Bell with us. And where were you born? On the old Bell with us plantation in Mississippi. And any family scandal? Yes. My great grand uncle gambled, drank, and ran away with his mother's French maid. Susie, come in here. Oh, excuse me. I'll uh, be right back. Here, what do you mean telling people you're somebody else? I, and I don't care if your granduncle's a horse thief. You shouldn't tell that kind of stuff to total strangers. But, Diane... Who are they, anyway? The youngest one is Dixon Harper. The jukebox guy? Uh-huh. And Colonel Fransworth. Colonel, oh, yeah? Where's his uniform? Oh, he's not a real colonel. I mean, not the army kind. He's... Oh, I'll explain later. Listen, you explain right now. You come waltzing in here with a character that's a colonel, and he's not a colonel. And with a guy you met on a blind date. Susan, I don't like it. Well, stop worrying. Everything's wonderful. I still don't like it. Susan, you go to the library, get some books, and read up on the Old South. In the meantime, Colonel, you give Susan all that stuff on the bell with us you can remember. But what's this frenzy all about? It's about how we've got a chance to really break the big time. Here, I'll show you. I cut this out of a radio magazine this morning. I was kind of hoping for an audition for myself. Latest news on Radio Row is that Plantation Coffee goes on the air and is auditioning for talent. Well? Well, don't you see? You know the trademark. The old plantation, the Deep South, and all that stuff. Yes, of course. Well, that's, that's made to order for made us. Made to order? Why, it's perfect. Look, Colonel, the head of the advertising agency for Plantation Coffee is W. Wilton Wilbur. Yeah, what do you suggest? All you gotta do is see him personally, sell him on the publicity value of associating an old family name like Bell with us with his product, get us an audition, and we'll do the rest. Children, your future is in the hands of a genius. <laughs>
I could use a cup of plantation coffee right now. Uh, forget it. Nothing to be nervous about. All you gotta do is remember our act is good, and Wilbur needs us as much as we need him. Just compose yourself, that's all. I don't suppose you're nervous. Who, me? Of course not. What's there to be nervous about? Oh, Dixon, look. There's the Colonel and... That must be Wilbur. Looks like death warmed over. And there's our cue. Little Susanna Bell with us, <laughs> with all the grace and charm of her illustrious ancestors. Coming around the corner with my head in the clouds, I stumbled right into you. All of a sudden, I was going your way. What else was there to do? sun was shining it could have been the moon was there a silver lining was it midnight or noon december or june going around in circles and i'm walking on air since you dropped out of the moon I fell in love with you I thought the sun was shining It could have been the moon Was there a silver
This is Tom Hanlon saying good night for Plantation Coffee and reminding you to give your dinner a perfect blending with a cup of Plantation Coffee. Honey, that was our best show. Our yeah. best and my last. Susan. Why, you don't mean that, child. I certainly do mean it. We might as well be sensible about this. We had a surefire plan and it blew up in our faces. Gee, if I could only think of something. You could only think. Oh, look, Dixon, we've been through all this before. It's no use. If I can't be a radio star as just plain Susan Parker, I might as well give up the whole thing and go back to the jukebox. Oh, boy, if there's anything I love, it's a woman with a lot of ambition and fight. Fight? That's all I've done since that, that lawyer Branson dropped that bombshell in this dressing room. Now, now, Susan, you know we wouldn't let you do anything to hurt you. But in this case, prudence is the better part of valor. Now, all I ask is just a few hours before you tell Branson the truth. Why? I think I can solve this whole problem. If there's even an outside chance, the Colonel can fix it, and I think we should at least try. All right. I'll give you until tomorrow afternoon. You couldn't possibly extend that until... Tomorrow afternoon. Uh... Tomorrow afternoon. Tomorrow afternoon. Yes. As far as I'm concerned, this is the end of the afternoon. And also the end of Susanna Bell with us. I wonder where the Colonel is. Probably out on a blind date. Come on, let's go to Branson's office and get this over with. Okay. Well, Susan. Yes? I'm sorry about all this. It's not your fault. You've got just as much to lose. I have nothing to lose as long as you and I are together. Is that really important to you? Oh, baby, the way you talk. <laughs> oh, the Colonel. All a bad timing. Hello, Susanna. Hello. Dixon. Uh, Susan, Dixon, let me present Mr. Curtis Rossmore. How do you do? Howdy. Well, won't you come in? Uh, thank you. You children may be interested to know that Curtis is the son of my boyhood playmate, Caroline Bellwithers. Is that so? Yeah. Bellwithers? Is that so? Then you're? A Bellwithers, too, but twice removed. Well, sir, we'll see that you're not removed again. Please sit down. <laughs> oh, this is all very confusing. No, it's all very simple. I had heard that Carrie's branch of the family had moved to Hackensack, New Jersey. Well, no wonder they were hard to find. Yes. Well, you could have knocked me over with a feather when the colonel here told me about my inheritance. Isn't it wonderful? And it's all yours. Yes. But, you know, I feel downright selfish. I mean, well, after all, Cousin Susanna, if I may call you then. Uh, it's, uh, it's getting late. If you want to see Branson, you better get going. Quite right. Quite right. Come, Curtis. Yes, you better. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. Well, good day, children. I told you not to worry where there's a will. Uh, as relatives. Oh, Colonel, you're wonderful. <laughs> there's no doubt about that, my dear. <laughs> yes, indeed. How about that Colonel really finding that guy? That Colonel. Oh, what a load off my mind. I always knew it was hard to make money, but it's nothing compared to getting rid of it. 800,000 fish. That's a bowlful. You're a funny girl. Why? Well, even though the money isn't yours, most girls would be thinking about what it would mean. Like what, for instance? Like having furs and clothes and bracelets up to here. Not knowing whether people liked you for yourself or, or because you were an heiress? Well, people would always like you for yourself. They'd be nuts not to. Oh, then, too, uh, money can be a burden if you have a career. Don't you, don't you agree with me? You know, Susan, those two years overseas, we fellows used to talk about what we were fighting for. Some would say democracy, and others saw us kids would have a better world. But me, I used to say... Fellas, I'm fighting for Margie. Yeah, I'm fighting for Margie. What am I saying? <laughs> no, I'm sorry Mr. Branson hasn't been in all day. Yes, I'll tell him. All right, goodbye. Come in. Uh, how do you do, miss? 
I am Colonel Hubert Fransworth. Uh, this is Mr. Rossmore. How Howdy, do ma'am. We would like to see Mr. Branson. Oh, I'm sorry he isn't in. Anything I can do? Uh, well, I'm afraid not, miss. I have to see Mr. Branson a matter of vital importance. In fact, $800,000 worth of vital importance. Uh, Mr. Rossmore's inheritance. Oh, well, I I'm sure if you don't mind waiting, Mr. Branson will be in very shortly. Well, thank you, miss. Uh, wa won't you sit down? Well, thank you, thank you, miss. <laughs> Well, Curtis, my boy, this is a red letter day in your life. Yes, sir. <laughs> I hope you're going to invest your money wisely. Yes, sir. Are you a stranger in town? Uh, no, uh, not exactly. Any family? Uh, no, ma'am. I ain't even married. Not married and a millionaire. Oh, not a million, really. Uh, close to 800,000, though. Well, that's close enough. <laughs> Uh, confidentially, I never knew the old girl had that much money. <laughs> oh, she was such a sweet character. I can just see Agatha Bell with us now. So feminine, so lovely. Agatha Bell with us? I beg your pardon, miss? The Bell Withers estate is practically settled. Susanna Bell Withers, the radio star, has already... Yes, been... I know, I know, but she has relinquished her inheritance to this branch of the family. But she can't do that. And why not, miss? Because he's not a she. I beg your pardon. I mean, you're a he. Well, that's been the accepted belief. But you've got to be a she. I see no humor in your remarks, miss. Well, I'm afraid you won't find this very funny either. It's a copy of the last will and testament of Agatha Bellwithers. Read the small print. <clears throat> and I, Agatha Bellwither, do further stipulate that said inheritance should not be bequeathed to any living male relative having claim upon said estate so long as there is a solitary Female Bellwithers alive to accept said inheritance. How do you like that? I might have known that man-hating, frustrated female would pull a trick like that. Like I said, he should have been a she. Good old mint juleps. And strayed from the south. Well, sir, here's to Brooklyn. And to the Bronx. And to Dubuque, Iowa. Dubuque? Dubuque? Sure, it's my hometown. For that, I ought to call off the wedding on grounds of withholding incriminating evidence. But I'll forgive you. Well, sir, that's right noble of you. Oh, boy. If my top kid could only see me now. <laughs> Tell me the truth, Diane. Don't you think we kind of go together, huh? Mm, like apple pie and cheese. Honey, nothing will ever happen to spoil this. Except that doorbell. All right, I'm coming. Well, here we are. Oh, thank you, my dear. Thank you. I certainly need this. Why? What happened? Nothing's happened. Nothing's happened at all. In fact, everything's exactly as it was. Well, then? Before I found him. What is this? Well, what he means is, for me, there ain't no inheritance. I mean, because I ain't a she. <laughs> because I ain't a female. You mean the money can only go to a woman? Exactly, my dear. Oh, this is awful. Well, it seemed only like yesterday that we were gay and young and happy. And... Now I'm an heiress again. There must be some way out. I saw a picture once called Charlie's Aunt. The fellow was all dressed up like a girl and he oh, wore... Oh, quiet. I'll think of something. Okay, mastermind, shoot. Don't tempt me. This is what comes from making a blind date. Diane, if you say that once more, fraud will be only one of my minor offenses. I've got it. All you gotta do is marry Rossmore. Exactly. What? She can't do that. Of course she can. It's a cinch. Look, Susan marries the guy, then as his wife, she turns the money over to him. Ten minutes ago, I was going to marry you, remember? But now you'd marry me off to just, just anybody. Uh, what do you mean, just anybody? Well, of all the lame brain ideas... Be quiet. You talk too much. I talk too much? First of all, you talk Susan into a blind date. You just love running people's lives, don't you? I was only... Then you talk her into a phony career. Yes, that's all I've meant to you is a career. Now, you know that isn't true. Then you talk her right up a family tree, and now you're trying to talk her into marriage. And you say I talk too much. Shut up. I was only speaking of a marriage of convenience. Yes, very convenient. If I married him, then I couldn't marry you. Well, don't worry, I wouldn't. And you can get yourself another girl for that Southern Fried Radio show. I'm through. Susan! With a little more effort, you'd make a wonderful half-wit. Don't worry, my boy, don't worry. Don't worry, he says. <laughs> Dixon, what about the dough? All right, what about it? Yes, that is our problem. Yeah, you should have been your sister. Hey, that gives me an idea. What about my sister, Tessie? Tessie? No, 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 she couldn't do it. She has no savoir-faire. Gladys. 
Gladys? Yeah, she might be able to get away with it. Sure, remember that time in Palm Beach? Yes, indeed, she was superb, my boy. I believe you... What's all this spiel about Gladys? And where's your southern accent, sir? Uh, let me explain, Dixon. Now, with a little cooperation from you, I could even cut you in on just a bit of the inheritance. What gives? Listen. Inasmuch as Susan's inherent sense of honesty caused her to relinquish quite a sizable fortune, it became necessary for me to produce either a real Bell Withers or a reasonable facsimile. And he's the reasonable facsimile? Huh, just a phony. Well, in the parlance of the hoi polloi, yes. Colonel, you're almost a genius. <laughs> yes, I know, I know. <laughs> but if there's one thing I can't stand, it's a phony. You should talk. Yes, and let me remind you of your own little deception, Dixon. Well, that was different. Sure, as long as you got your cut in the radio show, everything's Jake. And next time you get me an inheritance, read the small print, Colonel. I'd like to see... Well, that's gratitude for you after I cut you in that gold mine stock three years ago. All I gotta say to you guys is... Gentlemen, I insist. Shut up! Listen, if I don't get my girl back... Will so... you let me get a word in? All right, go ahead. You're a bunch of crooks. Okay, oh. okay, scram. I've a good mind to have the real Miss Bellwither sue you for attempted fraud. All right, all right, let her. Wait a minute. You, you, you said a, a real Miss Bellwithers? Yes, through the publicity of the radio program, I have located one Anna May Bellwithers. But it's all settled. Susan's in the clear. Exactly. And as far as using the name of Bellwithers is concerned, my client might be amenable for, say, a small stipend. Good day, gentle. I mean, good day. Yes, I think I'll be going, too. Yes, well, I'll go with you. Oh, no, you don't. You're not going anywhere unless this thing is settled with Susan. Don't you worry, my boy. Susan will come back. Women always come back. <laughs> That's one of the irritating little qualities. Any news about Susan? No. Did you try the hotel again? Yes, I went around her old apartment. She hadn't been near the place. Uh, do you know if Susan has any family? Oh, yeah, sure. Fine old family. Yeah. Named Bellwithers. Yeah. Dixon, isn't Miss Bellwithers going to rehearse for the orchestra? Oh, well, yes, she is. That is, but later. Look, we're on the air at six, and it's four now. I know, I know. This arrangement needs rehearsal. That's rehearsing. all right. I'll have to it alone. Right. find her and remind her she is all the world to me without her I don't even care about living tell her everything will be forgiven I would give up all that I own if she don't Without a lost, a wonderful girl. Won't the finder please return her to me? Lost a wonderful girl, a wonderful pearl. Please help me find her. And remind her She is all the world to me Without her I don't even care about living Tell her everything will be forgiven I would give up all I own If she'd only hurry back home a wonderful girl and if you ever find her please remind her Thanks, fellas. It'll go okay tonight. Where's Miss Bellwether? Oh, 
Oh, uh, well, uh, you see... Uh... I wish I did. Well, she'll be here. Well, well, Mr. Wilbur, upon my soul, sir, you never look better. I never felt worse. Mr. Harper, I don't like this sort of behavior, and I demand an explanation. Dixon. Any news? Uh, you better get somebody else for tonight. But we've got a contract with Susanna Belvedere. She can't ruin our show. Mr. Wilbur. I got something to say to you, and I don't care if it costs me my contract. Now, Dixon, please. It's about Miss Bellwether's inheritance. Uh, what about it? Yeah, let me tell him, Dixon. Uh, Mr. Wilbur, our poor little girl has been simply... Distracted. Uh, yes, distracted ever since he heard about that inheritance. I don't see why. The responsibility, all that money, sir. What about her responsibility to us? We spent a fortune publicizing that girl, and I demand that she appear on the show tonight. And if she doesn't, you'll be barred from radio forever. Well, that's okay with me. Mr. Wilbur, Mr. Wilbur, sir, <laughs> don't you worry about the show. Worry? <laughs> Are you sure this is your first trip up north? Yeah, why, certainly, sir. I've still got Mississippi. Yeah, I know, I know. Mud on your shoes. <laughs> yes. But I still can't place that face. Dixon, you can't jeopardize your own career. It isn't fair. Susan's just gone overboard about all this. If I could only find her. She's not at the apartment or the hotel. Where else? Hey, what a dope. I'll need you for evidence. Come on. Hey, Charlie, give me some change for this, quick. Yes. <laughs> I feel in need of a small stimulant. Yes, sir. A double meat julep. Your number, please. Susan, we got to talk to you. We don't have that number. Susan, wait. You talk to her, Colonel. <clears throat> Miss Parker, why aren't you answering the signals? Because I... Yes? I didn't see them. Your number, please. Uh, Susanna. Oh, Susanna. Oh, Susanna. Don't you cry for me. Wild card, sir. Drunks. How disgusting. Susan, the Colonel fixed everything up. Yes. Oh, she's gone again. She didn't go very far, pal. Here, look, bud. What? You keep dropping the coins in this machine. What for? Just keep talking to that girl, that's all. That's a good guy. Come on, Colonel. Here. Oh. What will you have, please? A double scotch and soda with no soda and very little bourbon. <laughs> Cancel that last order, please. But you've got to let me in there, Miss Quackenfish. I've got to see Susan. No. No, no, Miss Silverfish. It's Quackenfish. Yes, it certainly is. I mean, uh... Who are you? Colonel Hubert Fransworth, at your service, ma'am. How do you do? Ah, uh, never did I dream that up here in this frigid north, a dainty flower could bloom with such loveliness. Those eyes, that hair. Ah, uh, the gay young blades that must have fought for just one kiss from those ruby lips. Oh, Colonel. <laughs> Where's that young man who came in with you? Well, by now, we should be selling a sweet young girl an idea for broadcast to be quickly followed by a romance. Good day, Miss Quack and Silver. Quack and Fish. Yip, yip, the hootie got me a beauty. She sure is a dream, my baby said yes. She said yes, she said yes, yes, she didn't say no. Cock-cock-a-doodle, I'm off my noodle. I'm way off the beam, my baby said yes. She said yes, she said yes, yes, she didn't say go. Knock me a daisy, pick it all day. Tell me I'm crazy, I'm happy that way. I diddle-diddle, march down the middle. Baby said yes. I said yes. She said yes. Yes. She didn't say no. Yip, yip, dooty, found me a cutie. She sure is a dream. My baby said yes. Yes, yes. My baby said yes. Cock, cock, a doodle. I'm off my noodle. I'm way off the beam. My baby said yes. Yes, yes. She didn't say go. Knock me a daisy. Wouldn't say no. Pick it all day. She's out of her mind. Tell me I'm crazy. What can I say? I'm happy that way. Okay. 
This is Tom Hanlon saying good night for Plantation Coffee and asking you to listen in next week, same time, same station. Well, sir, that was a very fine show tonight. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Mr. Wilbur, did I ever tell you about my property out in Oklahoma? No. Well. Yes, sir, for a very small investment, I could cut you in. Now I remember you. Stop him! I don't believe anything you hear. You crook! You chiseler! Stop it!